Are you trying to create a dynamic chart or graph which updates every time you enter new data inside your spreadsheet, but you don't know how? In this video, I'm going to show you how to create dynamic charts and graphs inside MS Excel. Okay, so let's get right to it. So I have a data set over here containing dates and a number of subscribers. And what I want to do here is I want to create a dynamic chart which updates every time I enter a new value inside the subscribers column over here. Speaking of subscribers, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also turn on notifications. So if I try to create a normal chart in Excel, here's how it's going to look like. Let's say I want to create a stacked line chart. So I'll select my data set and I'll go to line chart. And uh, this is what my line chart is going to look like. Uh, and this chart is indeed accurate. It only reflects the data points which already exist in my data set over here. So in other words, if I enter a new data point here, let's say in the month of November, I have 500 subscribers. It's not going to be reflected in my chart. And I want this to be reflected without me having to select a new data range every time I input a new data point in my table over here. So in order to do this, we need to use named ranges inside MS Excel. And here are the steps for doing so. So the first step is to go to formulas in the ribbon and then click on name manager. And in this page, we need to define two new names. And here's how it works. We click on new and the first name, we're going to name it date. And in the bottom of this page, we're going to insert the formula which is currently displayed on the screen. So this is an offset formula and here's how it works. So I'll start with offset. Then I'm going to start the starting point, which in this case is the first cell in the date column. Then I'm going to put zero for the row offset and also zero for the column offset. But for the height offset, I have to enter a count A formula. And here's how it goes. Count A, and since we're counting the number of dates here, I will put the full A column range as our reference point here. Close parentheses, and then minus one. And the reason for this minus one is the existence of this header over here to make sure that this counting starts at the second row. So just to give you some context, in Excel, the offset function returns a reference to a range constructed with five inputs. The first input is the starting point, which our starting point was cell A2 in this case. The second argument is the row offset, which, which we inputted as zero. The third argument is the column offset, which we inputted as zero again. And then the fourth argument, we put the count A, which counts the number of cells in column A in this case. And finally, we have to put in a close parentheses, and that's it. I'll click on OK. So now that I created a name inside of Name Manager for date, I'm going to do the exact same thing for subscribers. So the exact same concept applies here. So I'll click on New and I'll call this Subscribers. And I'll enter a very similar formula. So I'll go through it again. So it's going to start with Offset. Then it's going to be the first cell in the range which is our starting point. For the row offset, I'll put zero. For the column offset, I'll put zero again. And our final argument is the height in rows, which we're going to be using the count A formula, just like we did for dates. So count A, and I will reference column B in this case. Close parentheses, and then minus one in order to take into account the header column. Now, if you don't have a header, you don't have to put this minus one, but in most scenarios, people have a header inside their table. For that reason, almost always we need to put the minus one at the end. Close parentheses, and we're done. So as easy as that, we created two new named ranges. And then I'll close this page. Now we're going to do the exact same thing that I did in the beginning of that is, I'm going to create a stacked line chart. However, this time, 
I'm going to use the two named ranges, which I just created inside of name manager as the input data for our chart. So let's do it. So I'll go to insert inside the ribbon. I'll select the stacked line chart again, and I'll right click on it and I'll go to select data. And here's how it goes. I'll click on add here. Now for the series names, I'll enter subscribers, which is over here. And for the data, I'm going to input the named range. That is, I'm going to put sheet one, which is the sheet we're using right now. However, instead of selecting a range from inside of our spreadsheet over here, I'm going to enter the name of the named range, which I just created inside of name manager. The name of our name range is subscribers, which I will type right here after the exclamation mark as so, and I'll click on OK now. Now the next step is to enter the X axis values. So to do that on this section over here, I'll click on edit and I'll do something very similar to what I just did for the Y axis. So I'm going to input the name of the name range, which I just created inside name manager here, as opposed to entering a range from inside our spreadsheet. So instead of selecting, for example, cells A2 to A12, for example, I'm going to enter the name of the named range, which is date. Just like that. And I'll click on OK. And OK again. And there we go. As you can see here, we have a stacked line chart, similar to the line chart which I created at the beginning of this video. But here's the difference. This one is actually dynamic. So if I enter another value here in this cell, for example, let's say I enter 550, it's going to be reflected inside this chart. So let me just add data labels here for better illustration. So there we go. So the 550 is added. Now let's remove the 550. Click enter. There you go. Let's enter another number here. Let's say number of subscribers by December 2022 is 600. There we go. The date has been automatically updated in the x axis, and the new value that is 600 is now illustrated inside the stacked line graph. And this is a very neat method in order to create a dynamic chart. Obviously, we created a stacked line chart this time. This applies to any other chart you want to create a bar chart, a pie chart, etc. And it's a very neat method and it's going to save a lot of time seeing that you don't have to go and change the input data for the graph every time. So every time you enter a new value inside your table, it's going to be reflected inside the chart. And this is how you can create a dynamic chart using the name manager inside MS Excel. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If yes, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also turn on notifications so you won't miss out on my future videos. That's all for today. Bye now.